സുപ്രണാമം സുസ്വാഗതം സന്ധ്യ വന്ദനം ഫ്രണ്ട്സ് വെൽക്കം ടു ദ വെബിനാർ ഓൺ ലിറ്ററജിക്കൽ മ്യൂസിക് പ്ലാസിക് പൊടിപ്പാറ സെൻറ്റർ ഫോർ ഈസ്റ്റേൺ ആൻഡ് ഇന്ത്യൻ ക്രിസ്ത്യൻ സ്റ്റഡീസ് കംസ് അണ്ട് ദ ഫാക്കൾട്ടി ഓഫ് തിയോളജി ഓഫ് ധർമ്മാരം വിദ്യാക്ഷേത്രം ബാംഗലൂർ ഇന്ത്യ and it organizes several programs annually the objective of the center is to promote research study and publication in the fields of eastern and indian christian life realities and activities for the placid podipara cmi was a luminary of the st thomas christians of india and contributed substantially to the drafting of the Vatican II document on Eastern Churches, Orientalium Ecclesiarum. This year, we have taken a subject close to the heart of every believer, that is, liturgical music. Music is the mantra of life, its joy, its beauty and its glory. Liturgical music is a lifeline of the live relationship of the assembly with the Lord, the land and the people. Music goes beyond the boundaries. Liturgical music is a movement and a moment of the faithful in mingling with earth and heaven, in praising God, bringing peace on earth and rendering hope to human beings through their praise, worship, adoration and thanksgiving in the divine liturgy the liturgy of the sirumalaba church begins with the angelic hymn glory to god in the highest peace on earth and hope to human beings this angelic hymn at the nativity of jesus sets a pattern for the liturgical music commingling of earth and heaven my soul magnifies the lord and my spirit rejoices in god my savior the magnificat of mother mary is an outstanding liturgical hymn giving us a taste of the salvation history through the revelation and the historical intervention of the lord liturgical music is the vibration of the celebration of the assembly redeemed in Christ through the holy spirit to the glory of god come let's celebrate let's celebrate our life in christ through the better understanding of liturgical music the sor the tal and the layer of the liturgical assembly what you watch here is a segment of the webinar on liturgical music organized on 10th february 2021 by placid podipara center for eastern and indian christian studies at the dvk bangalore come let us sing a new song to the lord amen father palakal hails from the family of the saintly palakal thoma malpal he is an indic musicologist and also the founder president of the christian musicological society of india father palakal is the first indian to perform in an off broadway show in new york to his credit are the first lp record of christian bhajans in malayalam and the first commercial cd of suriyak chants of the siro malabar church the american library of congress honored and invited him to deliver the prestigious benjamin watkin lecture in 2018 CNN America has also invited him to appear in the documentary on Doubting Thomas, the last episode of Finding Jesus, Faith, Facts and Forgery. I would like to welcome Dr. Joseph Palakal, CMI, to present his paper on Father Abel Periyaburam, CMI, creator of a new Syriac music genre in Malayalam, a case in point for music leadership. Over to you, dear father. Thank you. And it's an honor to be Father please, please unmute Father Joseph please unmute. 
<laughs> okay. Am I okay? Yeah, okay, fine. Thank you. Thank you for the sweet words. And it's an honor to be back at Dharmaram, where we all grew up and discovered ourselves and defined our ministry for the rest of our lives. And um, I'm so happy that Bishop Gration is attending this seminar because he's the one who ordained me. And it's an honor to be in his presence and do this presentation. So when I chose the topic of presentation about Father Abel, I had no idea that this was the 101st an birth anniversary of Father Abel. So what a big coincidence. So let me get into. For the next 15 minutes, let us travel back in time to the Eranaculum of 1965. That is where Father Abel rediscovered himself as a lyricist, poet, art promoter, organizer, and administrator. We shall focus our attention to one of the many creative phases of Father Abel's life from 1965 to 1985. Father Abel arrived at Ernagulam three years after the Sura Malabar Church promulgated the Malayalam version of the Kurbana. The other services continued to be in Syriac. Joseph Cardinal Parekatu, the head of the Sura Malabar Church, asked Father Abel to prepare the Malayalam version of the canonical prayers and the services for the dead. Early on, Cardinal Parakatil and Father Abel arrived at a crucial decision to keep the original Syriac melodies that the Sura Malabar priests had been singing for centuries. It meant that the Malayalam translation should fit into the Syriac melodies. Father Abel had to transfer the thought process and prosodic patterns that originated in, in a Semitic language to the target text that followed a Sanskrit Dravidian language's syntax rules. In the process, the structure of the melody of the Syriac text had to be kept intact. Singing Malayalam lyrics to popular secular melodies was very much in vogue among the Christian communities in Kerala. Dharma Giri, Dharma Giri, does it ring the bell? A Malayalam hymnal that Dharmaram College published in 1963 is a historical witness to the compositional practice among the Catholics in Kerala. There are 133 songs in this hymnal. Most of them are set to popular melodies from Hindi and Malayalam movies. They were sung during the paraliturgical services. By the way, all references in this presentation are available on the digital library of the Christian Musicological Society of India. That Father Abel belonged to the CMI congregation that valued the Syriac tradition and preserved the authentic Syriac melodies were advantages to his mission. Challenges. Besides these advantages, there were many challenges. First, unlike Malayalam and similar to Sanskrit, the Syriac language can compress layers of ideas into a small number of phrases and verses. The Malayalam translation would require more words to achieve a literal translation. For example, the Saint, Saint Thomas the Apostle used only three syllables to profess his faith, mar walah, my Lord and my God. In Syriac, the addition of a yod at the end of mar will change the meaning to my Lord without changing the number of syllables. However, the Malayalam translation will require 10 syllables in the place of three. So a melody of three syllables mar may not fit the 10 syllable Malayalam text. Second, beyond the syllabic structure, there is also the genius of the Syriac fathers capable of creating simple phrases with multiple layers of meanings. Look at the famous Christological sa chant, Sagadin and Mar. Sagadin and Mar la la hu sag, wal na shu sag, la pu la ga. This chant, 
consists of four phrases of four syllables each in two verses. So there are a total of 16 syllables. The original Syriac melody is set to the 16 syllables. The text naming is complicated because of the polysemic nature of the phrase Dilapulaga, which could mean without a doubt or without division. It is almost impossible to create a Malayalam translation of this chant into two verses to fit so, Syriac text melody. Third, Syriac prosody is much more complicated than that of Malayalam. The Syriac prosody consists of two to 13 verses in a single stanza. For example, two lines. However, the melody of Maria Kolakon Haubai the song that we know is Nengalpanagal Vindum Vindum Vai Chavayan Chindavani Ilverumni. There are 13 lines in a stanza. By the way, I'm not sure if there is any other cultural tradition in the world that uses stanzas with 13 verses for community singing. What is more fascinating is that a stanza employs only five pitches. 13 verses sung in five pitches. Fourth, similar to the raga-based classical system in India and the octo echoes of the Gregorian chant, Syriac melodies follow a systematic grammar and syntax. The grammar and syntax are there to serve the aesthetic articulation of the meaning of the text. Most of the melodies of the Hudra the book of canonical prayers for the entire year, had a syllabic setting, a single note to a melody. Each syllable gets one note. Melodies outside the realm of the Hudra sometimes have a combination of syllabic and melismatic setting. Melisma meaning multiple notes to a single syllable. So a cluster of notes ornamentation on one syllable of A. Kambel Maran There's Melisma. Often, melisma occurs as ornamentations on the ultimate or penultimate syllable or a phrase. Ornamentations serve as a semantic boundary markers, the end of a meaning unit. In general, Syriac melodies have conjunct motion, that is moving from one note to the adjacent note above or below. Leaps of a perfect fourth or perfect fifth are rare if there is one, it is almost in the opening phrase. Fifth, Syriac chants have a unique rhythmic structure that is different from the idea of talam in Indian music. Rhythm in Syriac chants may be described as referential. That is, rhythm exists only in reference to the text. Rhythm is not a separate entity as in the Indian classical tradition. Rhythm is linear not cyclical, and therefore does not fall in the category of talam. In the musical realization of the text, sometimes a steady flow of rhythm may be broken to draw attention to a semantic closure. For example, the semantic closure at the end of the second verse may call for a pause, a chisura, or a fermata. Uh, the difference will be without a fermata. So that fermata there is a small pause to reflect on, to give the indication that a semantic unit is over. Sixth, 
Three atrocity includes the use of insipid. The insipid is a verse from the scripture or part of the minor doxology. Insipid is often, often prose and does not follow the syllabic structure of the stanza. The insipid serves as a thematic introduction to the strophe or the entire chant. The insipid is intoned in such a way that its ending pitch could be the beginning pitch of the strophe. Seven, Father Abel had to deal with liturgical texts. Liturgical chants are repositories of the theology of particular churches. A wrong word or phrase can make a world of difference. The writer had to be well aware of the nuances of Joseph. both the source language and the target language. Father Joseph, yes. could, you, could, could you wind up in two minutes? Okay, sure. Thank you. Finally, Sri chants existed primarily in oral tradition. There's no use of any notation system to preserve the melodies. For that reason, individual variations are common occurrences. The choice of Reish Kala, model melody. At the outset, Father Abel had to make a significant musical decision on the melodies he would use for the Malayalam version. The Hudra is a treasury of Sri chants. He chose 20 melodies from many options. Now we shall do a small analytical study of one chant. He's from the office for the dead. The Syriac text consists of couplets with 10 syllables in each verse. Father Abel transferred this chant into Malayalam and transformed it into a superior level of poetry, making him a person worth studying. Let us analyze the chant. Since you are familiar with the chant and proceeding with, in mere 12 lines, Father Abel presented a musical drama of an eschatological encounter between a man and his death messenger. The drama begins with the angel descending from the skies like a fireball in the dim light of the setting sun. When man understands the purpose of his visit, he bursts into tears. Father Abel is a master of word painting. He resorts to images that are not in the source text. The Syriac text does not use the word malaka, angel, instead ruhana, a spiritual being. Father Abel substituted ruhana with malaga. Malayalam speakers are more familiar with this. Also, the messenger descends like a fireball. This is not in the original text. Chenti rhymes with anti and gives uh, aesthetic diversion. The drama heightens in the second stanza, Ketu Madingi, Mana Melagi. The shudder, the churning of the mind, and the abounding fear to the cracking of voice. These are not, these biological changes are not in the original. We are still in search of the melody of the Syriac chant. We do not know. In any case, Father Abel decided to use the melody of the Hetka syllabic popular chant, Tuyai. Tuyai Badamus Heshoga, Prisava Silberias. In contrast to the drama of the incredulous intensity in the text, the melody is bilingually simple, beguilingly simple. It is set to a single strophic melody in a steady meter in medium tempo. The melody consists of just four notes. The conventional techniques that composers use to create drama are conspicuously absent in the melody. In summary, the song test is a text testimony to the poetic genius of our Abel. He uses translation of a Syriac chant and transforms it to a beautiful poem in Malayalam. In the process, Father Abel improves upon the content of the source text and intensifies the dramatic effect by infusing into it intensely emotional imageries. One would not think that this is not a song of Kerala origin. Conclusions. Am I here? Yeah. I lost connection. No, you, 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 we are, you are audible. Oh, okay, sure. Conclusions. One, a CMI priest who received no formal training in music during his formative years became a pivotal figure in Kerala's cultural history and India's Christian music history. 
the consequences of the decision that Father Abel and Cardinal Paracat made are far reaching. The decision to retain the original Syriac melodies contributed to their preservation in a different cultural context. These melodies have become an essential component of the cultural fabric of India. Had they not done that, a precious repertory of East Syriac melodies would have been lost for humanity. For this reason, we may add to the discourse on India as also a country that preserves an intangible cultural heritage of humanity. Two, Father Abel was a mediator in the transformation and preservation of Syriac music tradition that came from the Middle East and took a life of its own in Kerala. The underlying process of transformation of a melodic tradition that Father Abel set in motion may contain clues for researchers on the early history of the intercultural music that we now refer to as Hindustani classical music. For that reason alone, Father Abel's name should find a special place in the history of books on music in India. Three, the manner in which Father Abel blended the Malayalam text with the Syriac melody was so perfect that the generation that grew up in the 1960s did not think that the melodies came from the East Syriac tradition. To them, they all sounded indigenous. Four, Syriac chants along with their Malayalam versions belong to a musical system, a Padhavi, with its principles of melody, rhythm, and performance practices that require academic attention. Finally, this historic webinar organized by Dharmaram Vidyakshetram may be the right forum to propose that the West and East Syriac music traditions in India should be elevated to the position of a third of music besides Karnataka and Hindustan and its systems. This is also the forum to propose that the Syriac music and the socio-religious systems embedded in it should find a place in India's high school textbooks. Thank you. Thanks, Dr. Joseph, for introducing us to the contribution and leadership of Father Abel in the liturgical music of Syriac tradition.